Thank you, Phil, and good afternoon, everyone. Good to see all of you. What a beautiful Sabbath it is. I think we're getting that. Looking like a little bit of rain, but you know that brings those flowers. We need those rains and brings those crops that was talked about there. I want to, before I begin the message, just uh, mention one thing. Sorry, Chuck, uh, on the announcements. Please be praying about Pentecost weekend. Please be praying for God's blessing and success of the campaign. You know, there's many in this area and surrounding areas that uh, uh, former Church of God members that, uh, you know, there were issues back in the day and uh, it kind of went by the wayside. We need to pray for them. Christ says he leaves the 99 to go get the one. And uh, we need them to come home. And there's a home here. And just please pray that God would uh, uh, bless all that's done that weekend. And we pray for his guidance. We look here locally to, to serve those that God sends our way. And uh, so we appreciate your prayers for that. Hope all of you uh, at home are having a wonderful Sabbath. And without any further delay, I'll begin. I want to talk today about truth. Very serious serious when we look at truth and we look in God's word and I want to look we're going to first begin we're going to look from God's holy word through God's perspective how God looks at truth because you see God is a God of truth then I want to look at I want us to look at in the context of what's happening in our world today in our nation and just horrifying, horrifying things that are taking place that are contrary to truth, that are lies, deception, filth, and perversion. Our children, our grandchildren, I, I think about them. Think about the things that are being taught in schools, things that should not even come out of a person's mouth. They're taught abominations. And the parents do not have uh, much authority to say anything. They should have full authority because those children are theirs. They're not owned by our government. They're not owned by the schools. They're not having a bunch of robots here to be programmed by them. And it's time people stand up. It really is. You know, even as Christians, in God's truth, we can stand up. We can have a voice of truth. We can have a voice of reason, a voice of wisdom. You know, it only takes one person to destroy something. What can one person that stands for truth do? That's the title of today's message. Stand in truth. What do you think about when you hear truth? For God's people, most of them probably go right to their calling. When God opened their mind to the perversions of this world, we were born in a ready-made world. Our children are falsely programmed with pagan holidays and all the things that come along with it, right? And it's all done, you know, parents even... Uh, they don't intentionally, but they lie to their children about Santa Clauses and all these different things that are, that are not real whatsoever. But it's all for the good of the children. That's where our world's at. But we think about God's truth. We think about His Word. We think about what He revealed to us from His Word when He called us. And it comes down to a way of life. A way of life. A way of trying to walk as best we can. And each one of us here, we get up every day and we try to walk as best we can in the light of Jesus Christ. In his example. And sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we make a mistake. But we try. Now there's a difference. You know, you can have many people can judge a Christian. And, and see maybe where your shortcomings are rather than looking at an individual that is working every day to overcome 
they're at least trying. You see, the ones that sit in the judgment seat usually aren't even putting any effort. They just like to, you know, single someone out. At our calling, we were convicted by the truth that God revealed to us. He called us out of the lies. He wanted us to stand, he wanted us to stand firm on a solid foundation. Christ is our rock, and Christ said, Thy word is truth. And we serve, brethren, a God of truth, a God that is all about truth, in whom there is no variableness, not one iota, not any shadow whatsoever of turning. God is firm in who he is, his character and his nature. He is a God of truth, of justice, of mercy, of goodness, of patience, long-suffering. I've learned so much, you know, when we look at God, I, I just, I thank him so many times for the patience he's had with me and that he continues to be and continues to work with me because each one of us, brethren, we're a work in progress and we're developing that very character and nature of our Savior, which Christ is the express image of the Father. And God desires his children, his called out ones, to be a people of truth. You know, I thought a little bit about Chuck's message that God inspired him last Sabbath, the last day of unleavened bread, about us being ambassadors. We're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Should be standing in the truth, and God's truth should permeate, or should radiate, rather, from us. Let's turn to the book of John, chapter 8, just a couple verses there. Jesus teaching. John 8, 42. And Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. The Father sent him. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. And he's talking to a group here that he says, you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. See, when we walk contrary to God and his ways, who, what ways are we walking in? Lucifer's. He says, you're of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He was called in the truth. He had the truth. He lived the truth. You know, God's word says in Psalm, I forget if it's 103 or 104, uh, talks about even the angels keep God's commandments. The angels at God's throne keep his commandments. The same commandments that he shared with us. Because they all represent God's character and nature. Love. They represent love. He abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. You see, Lucifer here, it's talking about him being the father of lies. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Satan is the father of deceit of deception, of perversion. And he's sown those seeds very well in this world. Jesus said, just a reminder, you don't need to turn there, John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. He can only come to the Father through Jesus Christ, and we know that. But he is the way, the truth, and the life. He was the word made flesh, right? And God's word. Christ being the logos of that word. <clears throat> Go to John 14, 6. 
Going back to Genesis chapter 32, just a couple verses. Genesis 32, beginning in verse 9, and Jacob is speaking here. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. And Jacob says, I'm not worthy of the least of all your mercies and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. Isn't that beautiful words? I mean, when we look at Jacob's example and he says, I'm not worthy of the mercies and all the truth that you have shared with me. We're not either, brethren. We're only worthy through the Lamb, through Jesus Christ. And we've talked a lot about that recently with the Passover, the Lord's Supper, the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and all the, that that represents. Through Christ, we are able. But look at that attitude. Do we have a similar attitude about God's truth? You know, truth, God's truth especially, is, is dangerous. Because when you know, you know, there's accountability that goes with that. And then, of course, being those ambassadors, going back to uh, the ambassadors, you know, we represent that. We represent that truth, and God's truth should be shown to others as they see our example. One of being humble and thankful. And that we realize that, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't anything we've done to have this wonderful opportunity God has given us. It's all because of his love, his calling, and all that his son did in our place as our savior and today serves as our high priest and our soon coming king. Going back to Exodus chapter 18, just one verse. Moses' father-in-law giving Moses instructions for selecting 70 elders to help him. You know, I can't imagine how overwhelmed Moses had to have been with trying to deal with uh, serving all of God's people and judging matters and, and uh, you know, everything came to him. There's a lot of folks. And we know how people are, right? People have their problems. They didn't have coffee pots to squabble over, but you can bet there was other things that they found to squabble over. Exodus 18, verse 21 says, Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God. So they had to have some attributes. And the one attribute was they had to fear God, and they had to be men of truth and hating covetousness. Fear God, men of truth, and hating covetousness. You see, as I mentioned at the beginning, God is a God of truth. Our Father is all about truth. Deuteronomy 32, uh, beginning in verse 1, we'll go through some examples. Verse 1 says, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, and my speech distill as the dew, and as raindrops on the tender herb, and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God. Give him the glory he deserves. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. See, it's not even of God's nature to act in any way unjustly. A God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. You see, brethren, God is the author of truth. He is the author of truth. And it is his very nature and character. Now we look at the contrast. You see, God gives us just how he feels about deceit, about lies, about the rotten things that are being taught to our youth, 
to destroy the next generations. That's what it's all about. You see, there's an enemy that wants to destroy these upcoming generations, destroy the minds. It's happening in our country and around the world. It's not limited to just the United States, although we are one of the leaders um, in some good things and a lot of bad things to this world. Remember what God hates. Proverbs 6, beginning in verse 16. He says there are six things that he hates. The seventh is an abomination to him. Verse 16, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. A false witness who speaks lies. The opposite of truth. Well, God wants his children, and we do, strive to serve him in truth. And we have been walking our walk in truth with him since our calling. Just as Enoch, going back to Enoch, walked with God. Whenever we're in harmony with God in his ways, we are walking with him. And his word says, two cannot walk together unless they be agreed. We have to be in agreement. And we have to come to God on our terms. I'm sorry, on his terms, <laughs> not our terms. We cannot come before God on our terms. You know, the world, they want to try to create a God that fits their life. That's human nature. I mean, I'm not putting anyone down. It's just human nature. They want to create a God that fits in their life without cramping their lifestyle, don't want to have to change, and that's not the way it's done. God says we have to come to him on his terms. Joshua 24, verse 14, just one verse. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of which your father served on the other side of the river in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Now, of course, we remember Israel, what they were taught in Egypt, all kinds of false gods and false ways. And God says, leave those on the other side, leave that behind you just as he did us when he called us. And we did that, and we continue to do that. 1 Corinthians 5, 8, of course this refers to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but just one verse there about truth and God's people standing in truth. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. God wants our hearts to love him, to be sincere, to look to him, look for his direction, understand that his ways are right, that he's a loving, fair, just God, that his ways are so far above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts, as his word tells us but we can become more like him as we walk with him, and we do. Let's look back at an example. Samuel is addressing Israel. And I think it's just beautiful words here. You know, Samuel loved God very much. He served God as one of his prophets. And uh, Samuel uh, 12, verse 24 He's telling the people, fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all of your heart. Serve him with your whole heart and consider what great things he has done for you. What beautiful words. And of course, David, a man after God's own heart, was inspired to write most of the Psalms. Psalm 25, verse 5 says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait 
all the day. Psalm 33, I'm just going to give you a few psalms here if you just want to make a note. Psalm 33, beginning in verse 4, says, Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. In Psalm 89, verses 14 and 15, he says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Very interesting, isn't it? The foundation of God's throne are built upon righteousness and justice. Boy, could this world use a dose of that. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Psalm 119, just uh, one verse, verse 142 says, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. How important is the calling that God has given us? I mean, each one of us can only answer that for ourselves. I would hope we'd all say it's the most important thing in our lives. I can't imagine with where the church is today, the church of God, which is made up a spiritual organism, several organizations, non-organizations, a spiritual organism scattered throughout this earth. And to think about some of the scriptures and what it talks about relative to a falling away, and there's already been one, pre-forerunner. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to go through a few verses there. Still with this theme of truth, but looking at another aspect of it. Looking at the aspect of if we don't have a love of the truth and what can happen. Beginning in verse 8, and we're breaking into the context here. Looking here at the future when there will be a false prophet powered by Satan. And the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. And I think we all know and we'd all agree we live in what are called lawless times today. Our nation is becoming very lawless. <clears throat> the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. You see, when you love truth, you love God because God is truth. His word is truth. His ways are truth. They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. When you turn away from God, so far it comes to a point, he says, I will give you over to your ways. That's what you want. I'll give you over to it. And for this reason, God will send that strong delusion and they will believe the lie and they, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation. He chose each one of us for salvation through sanctification, that setting apart by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Again, going back to your calling and when God revealed himself to us. To which he called you by our good news for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. What beautiful words for those that love the truth, that stay in the truth, that are steadfast, 
in the truth. 2 Timothy 4, I want to look at another aspect. Because God's word says there's going to come a time that some will not endure truth. I don't want to hear truth. Who's he talking to? Who, who was this written to? Who was it written for? For the church. For those that God's called. It's his instruction manual. So he has things there for us to, to learn from, to look to, to uh, be recalled to memory for, to be wary of in the future, things that are going to happen. Christ didn't tell us what was going to happen for the future for no reason. He told us so we'd be prepared. And he says, watch and pray. Be prepared. I'm, I'm using the be prepared. That's not exactly worded that way, but that's, that's the, what he's telling us, the message. 1 Timothy 4, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 4, beginning in verse 1. Paul writing to Timothy, he says, I charge you there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, Preach the word and be ready in season and out of season. Convince and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And here's the warning. He says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Who's they? Some in the church. He's saying there will come a time they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. That's why when we are called, we're called to stand in truth. It's, it's lifelong. It's for the rest of our life. There's only one way, just as Ephesians 4 tells us, there's one God and Father. There's one baptism. There's one way of life. There isn't 2,000 ways to come to the Father. There's only one, and it's through Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ of God's Word. Not a false one, not a false narrative that Satan has preached, espoused, and, and, the, and the warnings that God gave us, that Jesus Christ gave us over and over again, talking about before His coming, before His return, what would happen, what to look for. The very first warning was false religion, false Christ. We have Christ over here. No, we got him over here. No, he's over here. We have all got him. But they're all different. It's all different. It's not about truth. It's a Babylonian mystery. We have to stand in truth. And we have to remember what these warnings that we guard ourselves, that it never happens to us, that we never have itching ears because, boy, that would be a whole lot better because, see, that's what human nature can do. Human nature can, it looks for ways to justify things. But let that not be so among the church of God. James 1, a couple verses there, beginning in verse 16. James wrote and told us not to be deceived do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth. Of his own will he called each one of you. He opened your mind and your heart, and he began to draw you toward him. He drew you into repentance and baptism and the receiving of His Holy Spirit, that down payment of His own will He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. Christ, the first of the first fruits, and then we, after the first fruits, those in the first resurrection, Second John 2, just a couple verses there. There's so many scriptures that talk about truth. There was, I think, well over 200, 200 and some in the King James, just with the word truth in those scriptures. 
to the elect lady and her children whom I love in truth. And not only I, but all those who have known the truth because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. The truth never changes. That's one of the beauties about it. There's no deviation in it. God's truth is the truth, the way. And we long as children to bring our Father joy. He has brought joy into our lives. And we want to glorify Him as best we can. And we walk as best we can in loving Him. Loving Jesus Christ. Here's how God looks at what you're trying to do in your walk. Third John 1 verse 4. Third John, take this as God talking to you, literally. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. No greater joy than that my children walk in truth. That reminds me of my mom. I, I know I've shared this with some of you before, but she had two pet peeves. The one I'll share with you was, you never lie. And if she caught you lying, we won't go there. Uh, it was not a place you wanted to go. You did not want to lie to mom. And uh, she would take care of that in quick order. But I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. I tell you, brother, and I long every day that passes, and I see the things that are happening in this world, and hear these horrific stories of these little ones. And they're just trying to destroy their little minds. These children are created in the image of our Father and Jesus Christ. And they will have every opportunity to be his children. And there is an enemy that wants to do nothing but destroy. And I think and I long each day for that, tri that time that Christ will be here and rule and reign. Just as we talked about last week, you know, we had wonderful fellowship on leavened bread and the meals and talking with brethren. And we got talking at our table, those that were there, about the cancel culture and how they're canceling everything out, canceling history. If it's not history they want kept or they disagree with, let's cancel it. Let's get rid of it. And it hit my mind that we're going to cancel their culture. When Christ returns, our job, and we will have a job, and we will each have a work to do, will be to cancel their culture. To teach them the truth of God Almighty. To teach them ways of love, of justice, of mercy. Today there is so much bias and pomp, and they talk about racism. And so many of these that are up there in their, you know, their uh, talking platforms, and they've got a lot of attention, and they talk about racism. Most of them are racist bigots. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. It's the truth. Now, I'm not talking about anyone individually. I'm not pointing, but you, you hear them. You hear them, they'll talk about racism, but yet they're the racist. It's pathetic. Not that racism doesn't exist. It does, and it's wrong. But there's so many things that are lied about and labeled as that because, see, that's, we can put that label on there and then really come after you. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be those first fruits. Truth is the cornerstone of God's character. And God's children love truth. We talk about it all the time when we fellowship. We talk about God's truth. We talk about his calling. It's what separates us from the world because this is not our world. Our world is the one to come. But we live, as I mentioned, in very confusing times. Times that the ways of this world are corrupted and backwards and contrary to God's truth. 
contrary to his way, contrary to even what is right just for, for teaching your neighbor as yourself, you know, like yourself. Right is wrong and wrong is right. I want to go through a couple verses in Isaiah here that I really believe describe, for the most part, the world today. It's recorded in Isaiah chapter 14. In this chapter, if you go through the whole chapter, it's speaking about Christ and the salvation that was to be revealed. But here in this couple verses, verses 13 through 15, talking about truth and how it has fallen. And you look back at the founding of our nation and how depraved our nation has become in just over her little over 200 years. Beginning in verse 13, in transgressing and lying against the eternal and departing from our God, and has our nation departed? Yes. And that was really fulfilled in 2015. at a very high level. Speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And we already read Proverbs 6. We reminded ourselves how God hates lying. He, does, he despises it. He despises lying and deception. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth fails, and he that departs from evil makes himself a prey, because we're not part of it. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. We see it throughout our nation today. We see it in the world we're witnessing it all around us. Our government, the leadership, the news, lies, false accusations, destruction of character, morals. And we're going to see false religions on the rise. We're going to see false doctrines uh, arise, just as we've seen this LBGT. If I got it right, there's so many acronyms I can't keep up, and some of them just keep getting longer. I guess you got to include more in there. And churches that say they represent that they're ambassadors of Jesus Christ that will accept and take these things in like the LBGT and open arms and wrap their arms around it. It's absolutely false. And it goes against everything the Word of God teaches. Going back to the very creation itself. We're admonished in 2 Thessalonians. Well, I'm not going to go through all this. For your notes, 2 Thessalonians 2, and we went through a little bit of that earlier. And we talked about how those that did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. We look at lawlessness in our world, and verse 7 talks about the mystery of lawlessness already being at work. Well, it's blown to full fruition in our lifetime, right before our eyes. Verse, uh, let's go to verse 15, though, of chapter 2. Did I say chapter 2? Let me make sure I got it right. Might have been 2 Thessalonians. Yeah, chapter 2. 
Verse 15, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. You see, brethren, we received the love of the truth and that's why we're here today. That's why those that are hooking up are looking and living God's truth. And we must always stand in truth because the evil is waxing worse all around us and it's going to from here to the return of Jesus Christ. We're going to hear more and more messages edifying us to try to build God's people up for the times that lie ahead. We have to be strengthened and one of the foundational, the foundation was going back to our calling. When God tapped you on the shoulder and he tugged at your heart, and said, son or daughter, these are my ways. Walk with me. Walk in my light. Walk in my life. Let the blood of my precious son wash you, purge you, and cleanse that former life behind us. And let us walk together, standing. You know, when you're walking, you're standing, right? And we're standing in truth, the truth of God Almighty's. We remember from our calling the 1 Thessalonians 5.21 prove all things and hold fast that which is good. And we continue to do, that, to do that. We need to continue to do that. We need to continue searching in God's word and looking for those little treasures that he has hidden for us. Now his truth, his doctrines never change. But God gives us deeper understanding as we grow in grace and knowledge. John 17, 17 just says, Sanctify them through thy truth. You're set apart by the truth of God Almighty, set apart from this whole world because they don't have it. They don't have an ounce of it. Thy word is truth. And there's some that have some truth. I don't want to be carte blanche with that. So I'll take that back the way I worded that. But when it comes to the truth of God Almighty, there's few. That's why he says, Jesus Christ said, little flock. It's just a scattered few here and there. It won't always be that way. Because God's church is going to grow. It's going to grow in God's time when he decides and it will grow mightily. There's going to be a time of testing, part of which when that false prophet is on the world scene, Daniel 7, 23, he says, and speak, he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand for three and a half years. God's truth under attack. God's children under attack when Lucifer knows he has but a short time. God's true Sabbath assigned between him and his people. This work week calendar, you know, they've been getting that all set up for the right time. It's all all in motion. All these things have been happening for a reason that will come to a culmination before the return of Christ. And we know God's Sabbath is just part of it. His holy days, that plan of salvation, his Ten Commandments which teach us how to love him and how to love our brothers. Truth has fallen in the street. It has fallen in this nation. I cannot believe people that are supposed to represent, I'm not getting political, it's just our society, it is where we're at. It's not about politics. It's about standing up in truth. And our leadership and those people, that's who you're looking to, right? That's who the people look to. They look to the leadership 
And they should be uh, standing up uprightly, right? Not lying through their teeth. I get so sick of hearing the cliches about salesmen. You know, if salesmen are liars, they're giving good salesmen a bad name or saleswomen. Because, you know, a good one will tell the truth and tell their customers the truth. I know there's snake oil uh, types, right? My example here, using a salesperson, the same thing with politics. Oh, it's just politics that you lie. It absolutely should not be. It will not be in the kingdom of God, and I can guarantee you from God's word that those that serve in leadership will be done in absolute truth. That's what will be in the kingdom of God. And I'm so thankful. Because we'll look at those little ones and they'll be taught things that nurture them, that develop good, strong character. Things like love and taking care of one another, not walking away from one another, not lying to one another, but telling the truth and showing your love by actions, not just words. That's what will be in the kingdom of God. Truth will be everywhere. And Satan will be locked up. And I long, long for that time. <clears throat> well, I'll bring this to a close. <clears throat> we know that in the last days, God's word said it would be difficult times. And we're seeing that come to light in our lives. There's no question in my mind the times in which we live, the times in which God said you will know the season. Christ said, I don't know the day or the hour. Only the Father knows the day or the hour. But he says his children will know the season. If they're watching. If they're looking. He tells us to be watchful in all things. 2 Timothy 3, beginning in verse 7. I'm not going to go through. You know those first verses. You know the perilous times that would come. There are the times that are here today. It is alive today. The scriptures are being fulfilled today. Verse 7, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Talking about some there. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do all these that resist the truth. It's talking about some that had, you know, they had uh, a, a way of religion, but they denied the truth. But they will progress no further, and their folly will be manifest as theirs was also. But here's where I wanted to go, beginning in verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, Manner of life. Now Paul's writing to Timothy, right? But this is for God's people too. This is to edify God's people. You have followed the doctrines of God's truth. Manner of life and purpose and faith and long-suffering, love and perseverance. Persecutions and afflictions that happened to me at uh, Antioch and Iconum and Lystra. What persecutions I endured and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. As the days get darker, brethren, we're going to be brighter and we'll stand out more. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of. See, these words can can edify us for the long haul, for the road that lies ahead. You must continue in all things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood, looked at the childhood from your calling, from the day God called you, and known the holy scriptures, known the truth that God revealed to you, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction,
for those that will look into it, those that will read it. There's so many churches out there that claim Jesus Christ and they won't even tell their congregations, they'll tell them, don't read the Bible. Don't read that book. Here, we've got books for you. You read these. We'll tell you what to do. We'll tell you how to live your lifestyle. But you leave that Bible, which means books, 66 in all, leave that alone. Leave that on the shelf. Maybe dust it off once in a while just so, you know, if that makes you feel better. God's Word is given to us to equip us for every good work. To be equipped, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yeah, just a couple closing scriptures. 1 John 3 and verse 18. My little children, let us love in word, or I'm sorry, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We love truth. We long for truth. We live the truth. I'll close with Psalm 60 and verse 4. God said he has given his people a banner. A banner. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth. A banner. Hebrew 52:51. Something lifted up, a standard, a signal, an ensign, a banner a sign. God has given you a banner of truth. The truth that comes from His Word. Words that will never fail. That will never falter. Words that are to be lived by, to be taken in, and to become a part of our very character and nature. Truth has fallen in our nation. It has fallen in this world. And each passing day, it becomes more and more corrupt because the father of lies is at work at an all-time high because he knows he has a short time. But the truth from God's word and from his spirit, a spirit of truth, is within us. And he's given us his word. We have so much to be thankful for to have that Bible, to have that compilation of those 66 books that we can learn and study and read and draw closer to our God, that instruction manual that has all the truth and know that that God does not change. His children worship Him in spirit and in truth. And as an ambassador of Jesus Christ, We must stand always in the truth, fully, completely, and not waver.